I'm Nadra Moore and this is the second bride, my mom, <laughs> Mama Rita and my events. I'm planner. the second bride because I went to the labor ward. I was pregnant for nine months. Mm. I carried her. Trust me, that day was my day. And everything I didn't get during my wedding and when I was getting married, I made sure that I had it on her day. So we are about to share our wedding experience. <laughs> our emphasis on our. <laughs> So we met through a friend of mine. She was part of my bridesmaid. Um, so basically, she was going for this um, program in America. So this was like July ish, 2018. And I was like, you know what? When you go to America, all I want is I want you to find me a guy. Because you never said that to me. Really? <laughs> because um, it was it was this. I so was, I knew you were looking for a guy. I would have looked for some for you. <laughs> so it was um I, there were a lot of intellectuals it was like an intellectual program so i was like oh there'll be a lot of smart people then um the you know i mean like smart people so sexual so i said okay then um find a guy for me so she came back she's like nah none of the guys were good looking but i know your type so okay cool no worries and then she went for this world bank program in i think november she came back and said, oh, I think I have the perfect person for you. He's Ghanaian, um, he lives in the UK, all of that. I said, okay. So he came over in December for the like, Christmas break, but we didn't get the chance to meet because we were both too known. I was like, you should come to church. And then he was like, ah, why should I come and meet you in church? And um, not, I also couldn't be bothered to also meet up with him outside. So we just moved on with our lives. And then January, when he was about to leave at the airport, he finally decided to give me a call. So I couldn't pick up because I was busy with my mom at that time. And then, so finally, when I returned the call, he was, he was already on the air. Finally, I got his WhatsApp number and then we just started talking from then on. Actually, we didn't even talk on that day. He aired me. So like five days later, he finally responded and that's how we started talking. And yeah, the rest was history. Really, It's funny how we met. And I think the first day, he, he knew the Mama Rita. I was there when Quinster came with this gentleman. And then Quinster said, Mommy, meet my friend. I said, go away. If, if um, he's just your friend, then go away. Because you know me, I was expecting plain talk. Oh, Mommy, uh, meet my fiancé or, or meet my okay. husband-to-be or meet my boyfriend. That's what I was expecting to hear. He said, oh, meet my friend. And I said, oh, if that's your friend, just a friend, then go away. I don't want to know him. They said, oh, actually, Nadromo said, um, um, I should introduce him to you. I said, Nadromo, oh, wow. Meanwhile, I've shown the other side of me already. I said, go away. So he said, oh, this is uh, Nadromo's friend. And if everything goes well, um, he's the one. So I actually met him before Nadromo actually met him. So the first things, aha, uh -huh, so what school were you? I mean, that was my first question. Aha, uh -huh, so after Accra Academy, where did you go to? Aha, uh -huh, so what are you doing currently? Um, you know, so we, we spoke about that and I think we spoke a bit. Are you born again? What church do you go to? I don't know if he lied to me, but at least I enjoyed I enjoyed what he told me and uh, that day and I was fascinated by the fact that he was also Samuel you know and all that I met my husband in school he wasn't part of my school but he had then finished his set form in Accra High School he's always been the scripture union type of person so after the set form he wanted to do something for God before entering into the university so he decided to tour the schools in the volta region and um to have some some sort of a revival or a crusade or school evangelism or something so he went to mawili secondary school went to denu secondary school you know all that and then ended up in zion secondary school it used to be called zion college that is where i did my remedials after saint mary's secondary school 
So that day I heard there were some people um, coming from Accra to have a program with Scripture Union. In Angloga in those days, if you get people coming from Accra, I mean, it's like being in Accra and getting people from UK or from America. So I just wanted to go and see these people in, you know, coming to Zion Secondary School from Accra. I was just inquisitive. So I went to the program and mm, I think I heard a message I had never heard before. A message about salvation and about becoming born again and um, giving your life to Jesus. I mean, the message sounded strange, but the message was sweet. So after the message, I think I was touched for the very first time. So they said, those who wanted to give their lives to Jesus, hey, my God, I was the first person. I mean, I can't believe it. After the crusade, they said, oh, the people who live in Accra and do not have like um, a Bible believing church. Um, there used to be a holiday fellowship in Accra High School. So come, you won't believe it. The meeting was at 2 p.m. By 8 o'clock, 8 a.m., I was already there. So it became a regular thing every Tuesday. I was going to the fellowship. You know, I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed my life with Christ, my new life, my newfound love, you know, Jesus. I just enjoyed it. So one day, um, we had a crusade. After the crusade, I was told, Brother Ankara wanted to see me. And the crusade ended at seven. I said, why is Brother Ankara looking for me? He knows my parents are strict and I needed to go home and all that. So, where is he looking for me in his home? Achimota. Oh my God. So I picked a car to Achimota. I got there. He said, let's go to, you know, the Achimota overhead. Then the road wasn't really made. So we got there. And there was a hat. He pointed at the hat and he said, if God wants you to live in this hat, would you do it? I said, why not? And trust me, I had fallen in love with Jesus so much. Anything about Jesus, anything about God, I would do it. He said, okay, um, God wants me to get married to you. I said, what a boring thing. You get the leg guys kneeling down and telling you, I love you. Um, would you be part of my future? Um, God, God wants me to marry you. I said, what kind of boring guy is this? But well, I said, well, allow me to go and pray about it and think about it. When I got home, I told my dad about it. My dad also said, um, give me three days to pick our Catholic. He would wake up in the morning, recite his rosary, read his Bible. After the third day, he said, he called me and said, I have prayed. And the Lord says, go into the relationship. So, well, I went to the relationship, not with a fairy tale story, with, with butterflies in your tummy and feeling something, you know, some caterpillar moving, nothing of that sort. So, I went into it because God said and because my dad gave the approval. Well, I always tell young people, don't wait till it's too late before you start praying for your future partner. I will pray and pray and pray and tell God, bring me the right person. You know, this year my parents are 61 years in marriage. And I said to myself, I'm not the one to start a new story. I met my parents married. I'm not the one to change the story in my, in my home. I will make sure that if I marry until death will separate us, I'm not going to divorce. Going into marriage, I'm buying a one-way ticket. I'm, I'm not buying a return ticket. One way, I go and I'm not coming back. And every time I prayed, I felt this peace in my heart. I felt God was, was, was leading me and directing me and ordering my steps to to marry him but anytime i've prayed i knew god was leading me 
and God was directing me to marry him. So this is why when Nadromo's um, boyfriend also came, oh my God. Nadromo is just like me. Horrible like me. Um, strong, very strong character. No for an answer. We don't we don't accept a no for an answer. It must be yes when we believe in our views and we believe in what we are doing and we think it's right. We we go in for it. And I realized that the guy coming was just like Nadromo. Oh my god. Oh my god. So when I saw the two of them, all I did was to pray. I mean I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. God kept pushing me and pushing me and pushing me that Nadrumo, Nana, was the right man for Nadrumo. So when we started talking, I didn't, really didn't want to waste my time with the relationship and then it won't work out and all of that. So um, what I did is, I mean, she's already told you a little bit. She, wasn't, was, she actually wasn't supposed to meet him at that instance because I really wanted him to meet the sort of like my guidance because I went to uni in the UK so they were sort of like my guide and um, Reverend Dahl and Mama Nandi so I wanted him to meet them first you know they have to have a conversation with them obviously they're also spiritual too and they have the spiritual eye so if they speak to him they'll tell me if I should go on or not because I again I didn't want to waste my time so I convinced him to go over to go and see them and then um as, so when they met, I, I told them, Randa, Mama Nandi, if it's a no, it's a no. I'm not going to speak to him ever again. If you tell me that I should go ahead, then yes, I would. So they had like, they had like a one hour conversation with him, asked a lot of questions, had conversations with him. After that, they're like, oh, he looks like a decent guy. So they've given me um, my permission or their permission to start with him. So we talked for like six months before he finally came to Ghana and we met up so first and first we did we don't joke with church so um i took him to church he met a couple of like our like pastors that was really close to it all seemed like okay yeah he seems decent and then um he met my dad my mom was like no yes it's your dad yes it's your dad i thought it was too early but she insisted so it was just like a few minutes of meeting okay so he met my dad okay so what do you do um, they spoke, what's your name, blah, blah, blah. For my dad, the fact that he had a PhD, my dad likes school. Everything is school. <laughs> if you're intelligent, it's because you went to school. If you dance well, it's because you went to school. If you sing well, it's because you went to school. <laughs> so, because he if had... you speak well, because you went to school. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not surprised he, like, pays school fees for a lot of people. He really, really, really likes school. So, the fact that he had a PhD and he had my dad's name to Samuel, my dad said, oh, congratulations. So that was the time. Welcome said, to our family. So I had even said yes to him and my dad had already said yes on my behalf. So we started talking in January. During that period, we have our 21 days um, fasting and prayer. So shall in my church, if you come to our house, we don't joke. So anyways, so it was during that period when he actually um, called me and we started talking. So I think the week before we started talking, I had already gone to... Cote d'Ivoire that December for my friend's wedding. So I met my friend's pastor. He randomly called me. I hadn't spoken to him since the wedding. He randomly called me and said, okay, you'll be getting a call from the UK. And I'm thinking, at that time, honestly, he really wasn't on my mind because as I said, we had barely spoken and we didn't even meet when he came to Ghana. So you're going to meet some, yeah, you're going to get a call from UK. I'm just thinking, ah, which boy do I have in the UK? So I just started thinking, thinking, there was nobody that really was coming to mind. It's like, yeah, so we just need to pray that when um, the devil might try to, like, you know, come in between the relationship. So we just need to pray that um, when he comes, it's, you know, it stays. So at that time, too, because I was also praying at fast, usually when you're praying at fast, you know, yeah, already in the spirit. So we had already started doing some tokens. I mean, this might be strange for certain people who are not charismatic, but we're doing some tokens in church. Um, we're using the honey, and then the pastor was like, okay, do you have honey? And it was just like really in line with everything. He's like, yeah, so continue praying. He gave me scriptures, I continue praying about it until he calls you. 
that same day another pastor called me and was like okay there's a guy that's going to come into your life he has a phd um you know the devil might try to play on certain things but um you know we pray that this when he comes into your life it will stay so this was before we started talking and everything and then i introduced him to royal house so he he actually called me on the last day of our fasting and prayer i got him to stream he loved it and honestly that's how we started talking and the rest was history and then of course my mom also praying about it and yeah i love marriage and i wanted my my children to get married um they will tell you i worry them about marriage all the time my 20 year old daughter the one who comes after nadromo went to look for trouble and told me her flatmate who was her classmate is courting and going out with somebody i said mawena you are behind time <laughs> Mawena, you are behind time. Please bring me somebody early. Don't delay like your sisters. I I am ready to organize another way. <laughs> so I, for me that day, I mean, it was like prayer answered. But of course, I needed to pray more and to be sure that this was the guy. So it took approximately a year because he proposed in June and then the wedding was in July. So yeah, it's probably a year. I'd visited um, a friend, maybe I'll say apart from my husband, she's my best friend. And we had gone to a nail saloon. I was going to do my hair. So we were in the nail saloon. We were planning the wedding of our daughters we were picking flowers picking colors our dresses where we'll be shopping so the lady who was doing my nails got excited and said when is the wedding i said i don't know so she looked at me she said why don't you know i said i don't even know the man and then, <laughs> i mean you 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 can imagine the surprise on her face my my daughters hadn't met any man there was no boy there was no boyfriend there was nothing and i had started planning their weddings so trust me i started planning the weddings of my daughters 20 years ago so i also had an idea of the kind of wedding that i wanted my wedding colors i picked it when i was like age eight yeah so yes like we're basically and, we and you're maid of honor when you picked your maid of honor yeah she picked her maid of honor when she was 10. yeah <laughs> so as we've already said we are quite alike so we had the same or similar vision for a lot of things maybe the only thing we actually argued about was the wedding cake yeah <laughs> because and she... we'll come to it <laughs> <laughs> yes, she felt like we needed traditional, traditional wedding, wedding cake. cake, traditional fruit cake. I mean, I call the wedding cake, the recent wedding cakes, birthday cakes. Yeah, no one does fruit cake. And anymore. she said nobody does fruit no cake. No one does anymore. Very nice. Said, <laughs> wedding cake is not a dessert cake. You don't eat big. You eat small. And there's a reason why there must it's, it's a it's a fruit cake. You people are spoiling the tradition. We fought over wedding cake. Unfortunately, Nana also added to the to the fight. He also wanted carrot cake and banana cake. As a who, who does carrot and <laughs> banana cake? Literally, she picked all the vendors. I don't think there was any vendor that I put up. The the DJ. That's the only thing she picked. And even that way fought. I had a meeting with the DJ. I said, there's not going to be worldly music. Everything will be gospel music. Then they'll bring this music and say, oh, this one, uh, what word did you use? It's inspirational. It's inspirational. I said, I don't want any inspirational. I want gospel. So we had three main events. The traditional, the ceremony, and then we had dinner the next day on the Sunday. So, um, for the 
traditional, I mean for me, traditional is more family and close friends. I had 60 people for my, yeah, traditional. The bridesmaids. Yeah. Yeah. So I think she's worse than me. And she's going to do worse with her children than I have done with them. Yeah. Yeah, so for me, those are like all my friends anyway. So minus them, I didn't invite any extra person for the traditional. The ceremony was in church, reception church. So, I mean, because of the kind of people we are, it felt weird to segregate and say, okay, um, even though um, she's the mother and my parents are the parents of the church, we are segregating and choosing who to invite. So honestly, for the wedding, there was no guest list. So it was open to all anybody could come. So that wasn't an issue. So mainly it was the dinner that, um, so I went to them, I saw their list and I invited all the pastors. And I went to them like, you pussy your wedding. Why inviting all the pastors? What about my friends? So honestly speaking, at the dinner, it was more of their people than my people. <laughs> so they wrote their list, their little list left for me. That's when I added my friends. So that's my struggle, guys. Like. People looked at the church, saw the service, saw the number of people that came, and they thought we were extravagant. But you see, if you sit where we sit, and you wear the kind of shoes we wear, you will say that the number that came were too small. Which pastor are you going to say, oh, this pastor, you have worked well. You deserve to come. This one, you, you don't deserve to come. So this is our problem. On the day of the engagement, I had people calling me and crying. Mommy, the way I have been with you, the way I have served you, I have served you the way I've we wanted to like inspect guests at the gates we ended up people our peeps our security were inspecting and um, people who must come in eventually you know what we said we didn't want trouble we didn't want making enemies anybody that comes just allow them My colors were rainbow colors. Yes, I've picked that since I was age eight. And I didn't see anything wrong with picking it since it's biblical. So there were seven rainbow, um, seven rainbow colors. So the idea was to get each bridesmaid to wear one color. And then um, have one maid of honor try and mix up all the colors inside. So it was white and rainbow. So initially it was supposed to be eight bridesmaids and honestly picking the I'm like a huge sanguine who has a lot of friends well we took the rainbow number one she chose the rainbow colors when she was eight years old number two rainbow colors is not the color for L L G B uh, what Q, what what Q plus 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 it is not their color it's the covenant color of God after God destroy the earth with water because people were sinful then god brought a rainbow and said this is my covenant color any time you see this color i want you to know that i god i will be with you i will never destroy you i won't destroy your marriage i will never destroy the world with rainbow so this is our covenant color and we believe it that any time we see the rainbow color. We know God is saying to us that this that marriage on the on the 10th of July year 2020, God's covenant will be with the two of them, Nana and Na, and that marriage will never be destroyed. He will be with them, will be with their children, and will be with their children's children. So for me. And that color is our covenant color. Anytime God looks on that color, anytime it rains and God brings that rainbow, he will remember us as a family. Remember them. Remember Nanes parents. Amen. Remember Nanes siblings. And remember Nanes. Remember nice siblings. Amen. God 
will be with us Amen. from generation to generation. Amen. And if you want to know what our secret was or our secret is for that wedding we, can, we, we, we had, my darling, our secret is Christ and our secret is prayer. Serve our God. Have an encounter with our Jesus. Pray and God will give to you what you saw. Picking the bridesmaid wasn't actually a problem. It was actually trying to narrow it down to eight people. That was actually the issue. Of course, I have three main um, best friends. My roommate from uni, then Queen Star, and then Mama Queen Queen's Star, daughter. the one she grew up with from Sunday school. I mean, they've been friends in Sunday school. And then Mama Faith, my friend and sister from South Africa. So I told myself that, and I said, I've been, I've been in several type of bridal parties where you have to put money together to organize a bachelorette. You have to pay for your makeup. You have to pay for your hair. Some of them too, they want hairstyle for engagement. They want hairstyle for their main day. They want the same kind of shoe. You have to pay for your earrings. And then, you're, oh, honestly. And then the transportation alone in driving up and down, helping them. And you can't say no to because it's your friend. And I told myself that on my day, I will not do that. So the engagement, I had 60 girls. My mom and I got all of the material. Your Be mom and I. We, eh, how much but money so, you oh, but we walked in the market to get it. <laughs> <laughs> For me, the first one was my engage, was the engagement. During my engagement, I didn't have a dress to wear. I had to borrow my sister's dress. To wear on my engagement day. I got family members who came to my engagement and said, Look at her. Look at this beautiful girl. Her father has taken her to the best of schools, educated her very well. Look at the nasty things that they are doing. Look at the things they have brought. I mean, I had family members who came and ridiculed my engagement. The one who did the rope said she's never done a rope for mother of bride. I said me, the rope she's wearing, I will wear some and make sure I wore it. I mean, it, it was like playing my life. She really was a second bride. So she called me a second bride way before the day she had already started because she knew what i was i told her and i didn't hide it and i told her if she didn't set up i'll look more beautiful than her i just said to myself my husband um before the wedding my husband said that make sure that i don't walk to the wrong person and tell you what you <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i mean it was from my girls in church and um, we call ourselves second generation 2g um it's not a new concept in church where um as a pastor general i'll call it faith check it's not a new concept where uh, you want to sow into somebody's life and then you put in some huge amount of money and say i'm sowing 10 million dollars into your life you know sometimes it's just for fun and faith as well so yes the usual royal house things we do Fun, laughter, joke, and Charlie. People took it so seriously. I, I, I was even shocked by the things I was reading during the word. Honestly, very, very shocked. It's a very interesting moment. But please, if you have one million dollars for me, I beg you, bring it to me, okay? Well, for me, um, people spoke, but I received it. I believe God is bringing me one million US dollars. We receive it. So I receive it. During my son's wedding, somebody went to a saloon. After my son's wedding, somebody went to a saloon. And the person said, hey, did you hear? Then the person said, what did you hear? Hey, during the son's wedding, he was presented with a 50-bedroom house. So the person asked, were you there? And... The one who was talking didn't know that the lady in the saloon 
actually came to the wedding and said, were you there? Oh, no, I wasn't there. But that is what they are saying. It is true. I said, oh, me. I received a 50 bedroom house. So in the same way, that one million US dollars, I receive it. And I know a time will come that somebody will write for me a one million US dollars check. Amen. In our church, when people like have our doorings, you know, these young people will come and say, um, I've, I've, I've bought clothes. 40 footer container is coming. This person will come and say, I'll be the English teacher. This person will come and say, I'll be the French teacher. This person will come, oh, I am the one who will um, pay for his class one school fees. This person will say, oh, class one school fees, me. I'm taking him to Harvard. I will pay. So it's something that is fun in our church. Number one is to add fun to the occasion. And number two is faith. We are trusting God that one day the child will have more than enough. That the fact that the parents went to school barefooted, the children will not do the same. The fact that the children were sacked from school fees, the child will not go through that. So it's faith. So her, faith, her friends came together. I don't know why they didn't talk about somebody gave a car key and said, I'm giving a Range Rover. And phones. They collected all of it. They collected all the, all the phones. <laughs> this person said, um, I'm giving um, iPhone 13. This one. So it's something we do it for fun. But you see, why I am saying I receive it today, I have received my son's 50, 50 bedroom bedroom house i am building um um a shelter a shelter for abused women i am building um a rehab center for i have a school for drug addicts for um drunkards for s um convicts as prisoners for prostitutes um i have a school for them that i teach them i train them and reintegrate them back into society so i am building like a campsite um for such people for a place where you can meet up with god a place where god can meet up with you and building a place so when people said the 50 bedroom house i received it and today i think i am building that 50 bedroom house for as a camp center as um, um a resource center as a rehab place as um, a place for an abuse um people and all that in the same all way support and cash and kind is welcome. in the same way that one million that was a faith check i have prayed mm. and i know that somebody who is listening to me Amen. will say, Mama Rita, I sow into your project Amen. a one million dollar check. Amen. But Amen. if you believed it from, I wouldn't sit here and lie. Um, it wasn't true. It was something from her friends that said, oh, I mean, for the future, nothing like that happened. But for me, I believe it that God will call somebody to bring me that money for city of Shiloh. Do you even believe it? They just gave me their contribution last week. Can you imagine? <laughs> my darling. But as for me, I don't refuse the news. I am not refusing it. I am receiving it. And I believe some organization, Amen. some business woman, Amen. some business tycoon somewhere Amen. will bring me a Amen. check of one million US dollars I don't believe in the tradition of just the father walking you down the aisle I want the two of you to walk me down the aisle when I held her hand on the left and daddy held her hand on the right I said God I know I'm not dying now but even if I die now, 
I'll be happy in my grave. My eyes have seen what I wanted to do that I couldn't ever. <laughs> I loved the dinner as well. I think maybe because it was a final day and it was just the last day to really enjoy everything. I really enjoyed it. Shout out to Mrs. Theresa Yode who gave me the Grand Arena. Thank you. And then um, I just loved the decor. Then everybody and also all the people that really worked hard, the committee. We like we pulled people together from church and everybody had their task and they did it well. Shout out to Covenant Voices who yeah. entertained us. Yeah. Honestly, that day was just really yeah. beautiful. It was like a mini wedding concert. Yeah. We even did a family choreography. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, like I just loved everything. Daddy didn't do any rehearsal. Meanwhile, that day he got all the fans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was honestly such a beautiful day. So, yeah, I loved it. Experience. Honestly, pray. You know, anything could go wrong. Um, they are, like, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but the devil doesn't want you to get married like he doesn't want you to be happy and i've seen weddings where again i've said several times that i've been in a lot of bridal teams and i can see the weddings where they didn't pray versus the weddings that they actually prayed because a lot of things can go wrong you can even have an accident on the way to the wedding like it's a lot of prayer and the more people that are going to come to your wedding the more times it turns the more times people see your pictures is the more prayer that you have to pray into it so like one thing you don't joke with the prayer like you have the moment you decide that you are going to get married you need to start on you and your um well husband to be just start praying into it if it's every week you guys want to spend one day to fast and pray you need to do that you need to like spend time at the altar spend time don't it shouldn't be all fun 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 like make sure that god is really involved and is at the center and that's a lot of and for me our generation um that's where a lot of issues arise you know we forget that there are a lot of spiritual battles in it. A lot of people who get married will tell you the kind of things they've been through and things that they didn't even expect will happen, happen in the marriage. And it's a, it's a lot of constant battles and you have to pray. Especially with this social media where you don't even know where your picture is going to end up. You, like, like I'm not even, I have to emphasize on the fact that prayer is extremely, extremely, extremely key to the success of your wedding and to the success of your marriage and also the kind of prayer that you put in during the wedding period shouldn't relax a lot of people tend to relax because okay yes i'm finally married but you have to put in the same prayer or even more when you even get married you have to put in more when you get married so honestly um yeah prayer is key and it's just my advice to you if you're not ready for the spiritual battles please don't have a big wedding don't invite a lot of people there Make sure that you don't put your pictures out there. That's if you're not ready for the spiritual battles. But if you're ready to fire and pray, oh, enjoy the wedding process. Don't do things beyond your means. I keep telling people, um, plan according to your resources. Um, don't plan your wedding hoping that people might bless you. People might give you money. Um, a lot of people get disappointed because oh my parents did they help me family members did they help me i belong to this group in this church and they didn't help me the church didn't help me so i'm leaving the church uh my darling in royal house chapel we have four weddings in a day especially this christmas time four weddings in a day if the church is helping everybody my darling we will collapse the church so cuts your coats according to your size that is the first thing the second thing you've started working the man hasn't come i want you maybe this that is going to be the first plan ahead of time start saving you know i want to get married by all means you know i'll be married by all means the man hasn't come get an account that you know that this account i'm not using it 
even if it's five Ghana cities put inside, ten Ghana cities put inside, stop all the Brazilian hair, stop all the things that are not necessary. That if that is if you know that you don't have family or you don't have parents or you don't have people who will help you start now start planning towards it and before the day like i said i didn't have to struggle i mean i didn't stress up to organize my daughter's wedding and my son's wedding before the the men came before the women came i had planned my daughter's wedding and my first daughter the man hasn't shown up but i know what i want to do already and i've started planning towards it and then number three we can never under emphasize the power of prayer prayer is everything start praying for the man the man comes start praying for the wedding day the wedding comes start praying for your children i mean start praying start praying everything one reason why between my husband and i we seem to click so well we seem to have hit it so well we seem to have been very good friends we seem to have had 35 years of marriage it's because we prayed we prayed one year into our wedding once a month we met at university of ghana Legon Hall, Chapel Hall. I mean, if there's any God in Legon Hall, Chapel. That God knows us because we met there so many times to pray. My darling, courtship is not a time for having sex. Courtship is not the time to mess around, my darling. The young people of today instead of praying you are doing things pray so my husband and i once a month university of ghana and um, legon hall chapel we had all night and prayed six months to our wedding day we prayed every day every friday we had an all night we invested prayer into our marriage invested prayer into our relationship Number three, build your relationship, build your friendship. I know people who are married today, they are not friends. There's nothing to talk about. There's nothing to talk about because they didn't build their friendship. The worst thing you can do is to marry your acquaintance and not marry your friend. Love, yes, love is important, but love fades away. One quarrel will come and you think that you made a mistake in the choice of the man and you made the choice in the, in, in the choice of a woman. But one thing that keeps the French, one thing that keeps the marriage and keeps the relationship, number one is God, number two is your friendship. And then I don't know if that is last or I'll add something more. I want you to know that every relationship goes through a thieving problem. My husband and I, both of us were set in our ways. On our wedding day, we were quarreling. On our wedding day, trust me. So, just a little advice um, to brides to be: mm -hmm. don't spend too much time changing. Yeah. Um, in the middle, because you mm -hmm. miss a lot of what happens during a wedding. Yeah. So, with me, I was going to dance for. I was doing choreography with my girls. So I wanted to make sure that my hair was intact and would not be all over the place. So I changed my hairstyle. That really, really took long. So I missed a lot of the enjoyment on the Saturday and the dancing bit on the Saturday. So the day of the engagement, I I could freely dance and go on dirty myself well. Firstly, I loved everything about the engagement. I loved the decor. I just, I loved the ambience. I mean, because it was the first day, it was just such a joyous moment for everybody, everybody that came, seeing all my girls slay, my sisters, I, like everybody just looked 
really 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 happy so it was just such an awesome day and i guess not sitting in a car to sit in traffic to go somewhere you know everything was just here in the house so it, you just felt much more at ease with everything so we danced that we dirty ourselves on the saturday i didn't really get much of dancing because half of the time you were changing and half of the time it was just i don't know it was just, i it was just so it, the day was so blurry it's like you wake up early you get ready you have to take pictures you sit in the car you have you do the ceremony then afterwards they ask you to take more pictures then it's a first dance then it's a cutting of cake then and i told her i warned her she didn't listen i'm an expert when it comes to these things and i told her that in the changing of the dress if she's not careful and the pictures by the time she finished taking her pictures my guests had already finished eating i told her i won't wait for her i don't believe you are not the first to be married so we won't sit down uh, for you to be taking your what do you call you people call it these days yeah but and um, two hours and what kind of what kind of picture do exclusive. you say exclusive but you I, have to i don't have a problem with you taking exclusive but you must know that you are not the first to get married people have come to honor you but you marry once you marry once, yes, but there are others who married before you and there are others who are going to marry after you. Don't be don't disrespect your guests. Did, I don't I'll think they, to, uh, I, I don't go think I feel disrespect her because everybody does it. No, 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 no. It's not everybody who not does it. I go to somebody's wedding, I'm going to cut the person's cake, and the person has gone to take pictures, forgetting that they are grown ups there, take pictures for two hours. And I will tell the mother of the bride, you must be there to organize. Most times her friends are 10% or 20%. 80% of the people gathered there are your friends. So make sure that everybody who is there is comfortable. And I warn them that if they delay, by the time they come, we would have done opening prayer, introduced the chairperson and would have started eating. So she knew it. So by the time she finished taking her pictures... So yeah, they let the wedding leave me, basically. Me, the bride. Mm. They let the wedding leave me. Nobody. It never happens in anybody's wedding. Everybody waits for the bride to mm -hmm. get there before they start, no matter, because at the end of the day, it's your day. Mm. But they actually did that. So by the time I got there, everybody had already finished eating. Okay, man. And I didn't even go anywhere for the exclusives. I did it in the church. Mm -hmm. Because of them, I didn't even go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So everything was within the church, mm -hmm. but they still let it leave me. Anyways, good luck to my sisters. So, um, yeah, so I was honestly quite annoyed about that. But anyways, mm -hmm. life moves on. So, um, yeah, the, and also the traditional too was a really short ceremony. So I really liked that. We didn't do a lot of the singing. My dad just likes good, 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 good things. So the same thing they did for the traditional, which was a good thing they did for the wedding, which, yeah, was terrible. But anyways, my 10th anniversary, I'll organize my own thing. They want to leave the shoe go. <laughs>